it has to do with the uh, departure of Diana and Dodie. And I was just wondering if, if they so much wanted to escape the paparazzi that they just decided to go into the non-physical. Did they, was it just a joke on everybody uh, well, that, that they that they escaped. It, it was it was not offered as a as a joke, but it no, certainly no, not, was not a, a uh, perfect vibrational match to what they were feeling. In other words, mm -hmm. the, here here is the most significant thing about this. We want, we want to start in a in a different place so that you can really understand the dynamics of what happened. When you hold a desire, but your belief is not vibrationally up to speed with it, you feel enormous discomfort in the in the difference in those two vibrations. There are only two ways to bring yourself into comfort. One is to lower the vibration of the desire so that it's more in harmony with your belief or to raise the vibration of your belief so that it's in more harmony with the desire. So over time, both of them, but particularly Diana, had deliberately lowered the vibration of her desire. In other words, she had a long time ago come to accept that she was a public figure that would never be given any peace. In other words, she had all but stopped um, fanning the flames of that desire. So she had come into a place of balance. It wasn't total comfort, but she was sort of resigned to the status of her fame. As she came together with her new partner, her desire for privacy was amplified to new heights. And his expectation and desire for privacy was amplified to new heights. So now they're vibrating in a whole higher place than either of them ever had before with a belief that nowhere near matched it. And so the, the tug of war was very strong within them, you see. So their feeling of resentment, we talked about that earlier. When you can't control the conditions around you, you're, what you tend to do is withdraw and withdraw and withdraw until you find yourself in a very lonely corner. Well, both of them had sort of learned to withdraw, but now they have this new zest for life. They're no longer wanting to hide off in some dark corner. They're wanting to be out there living life, you see. And so they were at a heightened, uh, heightened beyond anything you could normally feel. Uh, feeling of pushing against what they considered to be an outrageous intrusion into their physical experience. And from what you are coming to understand, you see, let's talk about this business of attraction. It is law of attraction. There is no law of detraction. Everything is attraction, a law of attraction. There is only inclusion. There is no exclusion. You cannot exclude anything. And so uh, when you, and, and in fact, that resistance that we talked about, which is the, the only thing in all of the universe that lowers vibration, resistance is a pure byproduct of pushing against or exclusion. In other words, the desire to push against or the, the habit of pushing against is the only thing that lowers your vibration. So what happened to them as a result of their influence of one another and their newfound desire that they brought to each other? their pushing against was magnified 1,000-fold. And in their pushing against, they lowered their vibration so far from uh, the energy that is natural that they actually became magnets for the very thing they were pushing against to the point that it literally became unendurable. In other words, uh, and so uh, you may have heard us say before that if you have negative emotion and you don't know it, don't, don't worry, it will get bigger. <laughs> and if you still don't notice it and do a focus wheel and set your own tone, don't worry about it, it will get bigger. So what happened was their negative emotion had just escalated to such a high place that the only uh, then escape from it was release from the physical experience. It was a perfect vibrational match. If you could see it from an aerial view and see it in energy, you would see that every participant in that scenario played their part perfectly. What does, how does Abraham view the, <coughs> the worldwide outpouring of grief over this tragedy? Well, we are exhilarated about it for this reason. We have long noticed that physical humans for the most part, do not 
make any deliberate effort to understand their relationship between physical and non-physical until someone they care about reemerges into non-physical. And then their interest in the non-physical is heightened and they're wanting to understand the relationship between physical and non-physical. So we think this world event with so many people focused simultaneously is a wonderful thing because it, this heightened desire to understand non-physical uh, can only be of value. You see, the reason that the world responded to it with such power, such uh, enormous interest is because for most, not all, but for most, your vulnerability was uh, heightened. In other words, these are people who, in your mind's eye, are taken care of. In other words, the, if anything good should go, if anything good should happen to someone, it should be someone like that. Or what about Mother Teresa? In other words, if anybody deserves uh, good treatment, it should be someone like that. And yet, in their death, there is this great confusion that comes forth within you because most humans uh, equate death with something that is bad. So here are people that you consider to be good or cared for or th those who have all the things that you thought if you had then everything would be all right for you and they ended up dead of all things. <laughs> it sort of shakes, it shakes uh, your platform because uh, all the things that you thought you believed are suddenly uh, turned upside down and now you feel more vulnerable than ever you see until you come to understand that death is not a bad thing but a very delicious thing and that death is not a bad thing but an absolutely natural thing and that death in the way you view it does not really exist at all that there is just constant ongoing physical into non-physical into physical into non-physical in other words there is no end to your consciousness and so we are very much anticipating more of your mass consciousness coming to understand the relationship of physical and non-physical because of these very important things. You're complete? Thank you very Indeed, much. Indeed, right very here.